Okay, it's gonna have to be like that. So, hi and hello everyone. Today I will be starting with a disclaimer. I am not associated with any of the companies or sponsored in any way. I am also not an expert on any of the programs and just sharing my workflow and what works for me. However, I do hope you'll find something useful in this video and if you do, don't forget to like and subscribe. Alright, let's introduce our two contestants. Procreate is a leading drawing and illustration software on iPad that produces beautiful raster results and painterly effects. On the other hand, we have an Affinity Designer, a vector software that produces crisp lines, offers infinite scaling in an undestructive way and a full desktop functionality on an iPad. Both are paid application, just one of payment without subscriptions because, well, to be honest, I don't like that. Procreate was about £20 when I bought it. I think it's cheaper now. Affinity alone was about £18, but I bought the universal license that offered me all three programs, both on a desktop and on an iPad, when Affinity was having a sale. Now, I've mentioned raster and vector. I am not going to bore you with technical details, but pixels are square little buggers that you color code, and vectors are coded directions and size. So when you resize a pixel, you effectively stretch it and therefore lose some of its quality. With vectors, you always have coordinates and info behind it, so it will recreate itself exactly the same way, regardless of the size. That's it. That's all you're going to get from me. If you need more, Google it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to compare is when would you use Procreate over Affinity Designer and vice versa. In simple terms, if your project is a painting, a sketch with shading, a textured illustration with, let's say, watercolor effects, or you'd like the most natural drawing experience, you'd go for Procreate. If you're designing a logo, need precise shapes and spacing or create elements to reuse later with all the details and colors remaining, you'd go for Affinity Designer. In my workflow, I usually create line work in Affinity and later on export it to Procreate for coloring since it feels more natural to me. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that Affinity can't do nice coloring because it can. It has a multitude of options to color your illustrations and a pixel persona that you can use in a similar way to Procreate. I just prefer to use Procreate because I started drawing in this software and I am more familiar with it. This doesn't mean that in the future I won't swap to using Affinity exclusively. I recently started doing all of my cozy and cartoonish illustrations in Affinity alone, which reduced my Procreate use to sketching and adding blurred or watercolor effects for now. As an example of how making the most of both applications work, let me show you one of my products that I've made for my shop launch. And here comes a little self-advertising. If you'd like to purchase this tracker and other fantasy related and cozy items, you can sign up for my newsletter and you'll get notified about things such as when the pre-orders go live, when new freebies are available and when I run giveaways. All of that good stuff in exchange for your email address. How about that, huh? The link is in the description if you'd like to do it now. For your convenience, it will open in a separate tab so you can continue watching. Now back to the comparison. So this is a 30 day challenge tracker that has space for 30 stickers you can add upon completion of each of the days. Can you create it in Procreate? Yes. Why did I do it in Affinity then? Well, because using vectors means that each element is created on a separate layer and can be adjusted in any way possible. I can adjust the color of the line, thickness, position, and pretty much anything else. And having 30 circles to squeeze on an A4 page and not knowing where to put them just yet meant that I would have to create 30 layers in Procreate, one for each of the circles. Now, I also wanted the circles to be a specific size so I can make stickers that are made to measure and cover the line nicely, but didn't know what size will fit on an A4. So I've done a bit of experimenting and trying out. Making the circles in Affinity meant I can easily duplicate them and rearrange without fiddling with the layer selections or lasso tool. I've added some mountains around the circles and once I was happy with the layout, line work and sizing, I've exported it as PNG with transparent background. I've created a new blank canvas in Procreate of the same size and continued my project there. 
and since I exported my line art without any background, I could add this painterly shading and colors for the mountains. I've also added trees in Procreate because I haven't transferred them yet to Affinity. Again, both actions could be completed in one of those programs, but for my sanity and other reasons, I have combined the two. Now when I finish the design of the progress stickers and anything else that I want to add to this tracker, I know the exact measurements for resizing to ensure the border is covered. I'm also thinking about adding a little border to this tracker, so if you like the idea and you think it would look good, let me know down in the comments. I also like how the lines look very crisp in Affinity Designer. I'm not sure if it's just me being challenged, but when I try to do a nice looking line art in Procreate, it ends up looking like this. And yes, I know you can adjust the stabilization of the brush itself, however, I find that it doesn't give me the outcome that I want. When I do my line art in Affinity, I can adjust the line whichever way I want. I want the tip of the line to be super skinny, not a problem. I want it chunky, you got it. I don't like the curve of it. I can go and amend it whichever way I want. I'm not going to be drawing the same thing over and over again when I can adjust it in affinity in the tiniest details possible. Needless to say, I will be most likely redoing this piece in Affinity Designer before I offer this memo pad for sale in my shop. This is another example. A map of the citadel I've made as a commission for my favorite writer. This piece has a maze of residencies and yes, I could draw each of the houses separately and then color them. I would most likely spend a week creating all of those houses. But why would I do it if I can just duplicate as easy as click and drag and change the details to make them look unique? In Affinity Designer, I can just copy, then adjust the placement of windows, stretch or shrink the size, and I have a completely new building in seconds. Another example of using Affinity Designer would be that section over here. So this section actually has been created separately and then incorporated into the bigger map. It was also a part of the commission work and I had to design a rectangular walled complex. I tried to do it in Procreate, but when it comes to aligning circles for the towers or ensuring all walls are the same thickness, I gave up and swapped to Affinity, where I could just type in the thickness I wanted and have a symmetrical look all around. And as finishing touches, I have added some background in Procreate, where I'm doing those painterly, kind of like a watercolor effect lines and a bit of shading where I missed some. I will be focusing now more on the benefits of using Affinity because the chances are that if you're a subscriber, you already use and know Procreate. Also, Procreate has a much bigger fan base and user base than Affinity. So I want you to see the benefits of using both applications in a more of complementing each other way instead of a which one is better way. So let me touch on another aspect that I use in my workflow and that's assets versus stamp brushes. I'm sure that if you've watched any of my previous tutorials, you're most likely sick of hearing about stamp brushes. Well, let me introduce you to the beef top version of Procreate's stamp brushes, which is the assets in Affinity Designer. What the asset is in an essence well, it's a copy of an element you've created previously with all its properties still intact. But the twist is that you can change any of them after placing the asset on your canvas. So here is an example, the mountain that I have shown you a couple of weeks ago, how to create in Procreate. So in Procreate, you stamp it on and that's it. You can theoretically use Liquify to change the thickness of the lines but it's not the greatest way of adjusting it. Now in Affinity Designer, I am using a mountain asset and if I double click on it, I can access all of the lines that create it. I have grouped separately the thin lines and the thick ones. So now if I choose each group, I can amend it in whatever way I want, make them thicker or thinner, change color and so on. I can even change the shape of some of the lines if I so desire. Now, this is a cool trick, right? 
Now another example would be this asset of a book. As you can see I have a couple of variations saved but let's just assume I only have this one. So now with the shelf that is empty I can fill it up quickly using just this one asset and let me just show you how. You copy it, adjust the size of it, you can change the color of the spine of the group, you can change the color of the shading as well and obviously the spine folds as well if you want to. You can also adjust the label or remove it overall and here you go, you've got another book that you can add to the collection. If you need another one, again, you can just duplicate that one, adjust the size of it the way you want. You can copy the label as well, just make sure that you bring it up to the correct layer. You can adjust the size of it or duplicate it if you want to. You can do the same with the spine folds. Let's make this one blue. And here you go, we got another book and so on. The options are endless once you create something you can work with. Here is a blatant advert for one of my cozy bookmarks that will also be available in my shop later this year. Using the same elements in your future illustration will also contribute to the coherency of your artwork style. Remember that house from the map I showed you before? Imagine having some of them saved as assets so you can use them in other city maps. How quickly would you create an entire district, hmm? Okay, last thing I'll do in this part is recoloring option. I'm just gonna quickly mention it without going into too many details, but if you want to know more, please add a comment and I will include a more detailed video in the future. Now I know in Procreate you can adjust the layer color and curves, you can do so here as well. You can do a clipping mask or simply paint over something using the alpha lock option, but in Affinity you have one advantage. Since each element is kind of like a separate layer and each of them is individual and not dependent on one another, you can easily change color of all of the elements that share it. For example, if you print your artwork and the red just doesn't look as it should or your yellow is not as bright as you'd like, as long as you set up your file correctly to begin with, you can quickly adjust it. Here the colors are very desaturated, so I'd like to make them more vibrant. Since I've set my palette as global colors, and you can tell by those little white triangles on the color swatches, I can edit any of them and adjust not only saturation, but the color itself. You can even type in different properties for the colors from online color palettes to replicate them if you want, as simple as that. I hope the above examples give you a better view into the capabilities of Affinity Designer combined with the natural feel to Procreate. If you need more, consider subscribing to be notified about part 2 where I'll share more useful functionality, especially if you try to convert your artwork into printable products like stickers and sticker sheets, bookmarks and make your own branded thank you cards and packaging. And obviously all aspects of this video will depend on your workflow and the art that you create. I doubt you will get a lot out of Affinity if your art is solely based on blending colors and textures, although it does have a pixel persona that allows you to do just that. But if you like to create line art based illustrations, need precise placements or sizes, or need a lot of duplicated elements without making them look all the same or putting a lot of work up front, then I would totally recommend giving Affinity Designer a try especially that it's a one-off payment for the iPad version that won't break your bank. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or suggestions for examples you'd like to see in the next parts. Thank you as always for watching and all of the support. Have a great time creating and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!